hey, I'm Sam with these guys again. It's a bit dark because it's early in the morning. The sun hasn't come up over the hillside yet. Um, so I have a few thoughts to share. <clears throat> if I haven't made a video for a, a few weeks, it's because um, I'm spiraling in on something that, that uh, I've been trying to say, but can't say and then I just give up what I what it is I think I should be saying and then I discover what it is that uh, was beneath it all along um, so sometimes that does take me two or three weeks and I have tried to make this video every day for 10 days and every time I've tried because I can only try a couple of times a day and uh, otherwise it loses spontaneity and I'm just repeating myself so every every version is different every version is sort of getting closer and closer and closer to something that essential that i'm trying to communicate and uh i don't even know what that is really most of the time so i have to get out of the way and it's very frustrating sometimes sometimes it doesn't take very long sometimes it takes you know three four weeks and then all of a sudden i realize what it is so anyway hopefully this is it Look at the colour here though, beautiful, beautiful Scotland. So we're going to walk down the hill and hopefully uh, I can uh, get it all out. Um, so yeah, usually each video is inspired by the one before because I re-watch it and I just think, Shh, oh God, oh, yeah, that's made me think about this other thing that maybe I can talk about. So. Um, you know, I led a life of desperation and crisis, repetitive crisis and, and coping. And I think, you know, there's nothing more perverse um, and distorted than being born into hostility, whatever form that takes, um, because it, it's a complete inversion of how we are set up to exist we we bond we want to love we want to be loved and both of those are equally as important because we want to live in a loving relationship where we transcend the complexity of the microcosm of self and when that isn't there and we can't live in relationship what do we have we have self so we go inwards into that complexity into that hall of mirrors where we see reflected everything we've taken on in that brokenness self-blame self-hate shame guilt anger rage fear fear and reflected in that realm inside our own being is all of that doubt doubt and it's self-referential. It's all self-referential, reflecting backwards and forwards. And so every time you think you've found stability uh, and you've made a decision, all of a sudden, the, the concreteness of that decision is thrown into doubt. And it happens every time. So when you're a child and you're stuck in a situation that you can't get out of and the people that are supposed to be stable and nourishing aren't they're unstable uncertain and you don't have any comprehension about why this is happening you have to invest in something stable you have to find stability somehow and so what i think what we do is we identify very strongly with the certainty of our own thoughts and feelings our own opinions and there's nothing else we can do wait good boy come here and so then we reach a point in our 40s maybe 50s like me and you are so exhausted with the repetitive pattern of crisis and desperation. You are so
sick of being so confined in this prison of, of how you do things, how you show up. And then you say, all right, I'm going to change. I'm going to heal. And you get on this merry-go-round, trying different modalities, you know, yoga, tai chi, different therapies, different methods, EMDR, all that stuff, which may work to a degree. And, and all it is, is the identification with self having the power to fix all these problems that um, were given to you in the pattern of, of abuse. And maybe you will be able to sort it all out. I think most of us can't and we get to a point that I'm gonna talk about in this. So what happened to me and, what, and I have conversations with people all the time that are in the same situation and I see it very, very clearly. We get stuck because we are trying to change and we can't and we keep hitting this wall of resistance over and over and over and over again. And it, and it is so, so frustrating and you keep making some progress, hitting this wall, falling back into despair. It's because we're using the same methods we've always used to get what we want. Um, and those methods, those methods involved, involve doing something or getting something or achieving something. Um, and so what I, what happened to me is I kept trying to change. Over the course of about 10 years, I stopped, I stopped coping with narcotics. Um, my drinking, I still drink occasionally, not very often. Um, my drinking was uh, off the rails for a long time, most of my life. I don't know, I don't really know how, how I'm still alive and healthy, but I stopped doing that. I, believe me, I stopped that. I, believe me, it was harrowing, very difficult to, to, to beat. But, you know, even a couple of years ago, I was drinking very heavily, still bulimic, on and off. Stopped all that stuff, because it's easy to stop that stuff, because it hurts you. But there was one thing I could not let go of, one coping mechanism I could not let go of. Good boy. There was one coping mechanism I could not let go of, and it was torture. And, it was hope. It was the incessant planning for a hoped for future. And what happened was, I was using the same methods to try and achieve that hoped for future. The same methods that confined me and gave me stability. And then I hit that wall of resistance so many times and felt so much pain. I just had a moment of clarity when I f finally surrendered and just said, fuck, who I am is not capable of achieving what I'm trying to achieve. I'm not capable of having this abstract idea of a life absent of conflict, secure, safe, peaceful, contented. I'm not capable because of how I go about things and how I go about things is rooted in the investing in the certainty of my own thoughts and feelings and ways and mechanisms for control. And when I realized all this, I just, I had a breakdown. This is a couple of years ago, maybe a little, little bit longer now. I had a breakdown and I, and the only thing that was keeping me going was hope. The only thing that was keeping me sort of away from the torment of everything I'd lived with all of my life, I was 52 at this point, was, living in a future that was never going to happen. And without hope, I had nothing left but this moment. And I fell apart. And that's when I came into contact with everything that I had buried so deeply. Um, and I started to feel it. And I remember for a period, it wasn't quite a year, maybe eight, nine, ten months, I am... Um, I was absolutely terrified of going to bed because 
because well sleep has always been a difficult place but I was terrified of going to sleep going to bed because everything stops at night everything stops and there's a stillness and I was terrified of that stillness because what it brought up I'd never known stillness I'd always had movement in my mind and very often I would I would find myself you know curled in a ball absolutely terrified and I'd sit on the edge of the bed and just sort of double over twisted and just scream and scream and scream and this this constricted scream because I was so terrified so terrified and I didn't even know why I didn't even know why I thought it was the consuming terror of what I went through as a child but it wasn't it wasn't and only last week when I've been trying to make this video did I realize very clearly what that terror was and it was the realization that I had no control I had no control I was powerless so when you're trying to fix yourself when you're struggling to survive you're living in desperation and you're incessantly planning you're just trying to create certainty you're trying to create control you're just trying to create control and every use of our will in the way that we use it as traumatized people to get control you know we tend to manipulate strategize transact every use of our will in that way just creates suffering and it creates isolation because we're not giving ourselves away so when I realized I was powerless I had no control not in any any real way I was terrified because in the in the, the madness of a broken home with adults completely out of control you have to have a sense of control and even even self-blame is a is a way of taking control because then you say okay right it's my fault i can sit i can sort this out i can fix myself and that's all you're doing in your 40s and 50s on the merry-go-round of therapy and different modalities and different things you're trying to do that you never stick at it's the same thing control but we do have power real power the only real power we have is to surrender the only real power that brings liberation is to give yourself away and that's what I started doing a year and a half ago we get sort of trapped in self-centeredness and we cannot show up in relationship without self-doubt, self-criticism, hyper self-consciousness. So you have to go through a period. For me, it's, it, you know, it, it's only just really stopped. Not stopped, but it's le way less than it was. Where if I'm in a situation that would normally trigger PTSD and, and hyper self-consciousness and I'd, I'd panic and have anxiety and I'd want to withdraw and I'd dissociate, over the last sort of like five or six months really, I just began to realize I don't need to feel anything in this situation. In this situation, I mean, I couldn't even walk into a room with more than two, two people. And you don't need to walk into a situation and make it all about you, what you're feeling. You don't need to feel anything at all. It's, you know, it, it takes time to stop thinking about yourself because we do blame ourselves we do we crippled with self-doubt and self-criticism that we're doing it wrong there's something wrong in us you just have to something just came to me i'm going to i'm going to share a quote wittgenstein said words to the effect of 
you cannot enter any world for which you do not have the language. We live in here, the world in our own head, trapped with this duality of self-hate and the belief in our power to fix ourselves, self-blame, all that stuff, but self-doubt, certainty, but self-doubt. You know, it, it's, it's such a cruel paradox, certainty and self-doubt. So our language is the language of control. It's the language of certainty. And all of that just makes the world as small as your own fear, as small as your own head, as small as your own self. So the language with which we enter the world is the language of unknowing, it's a language of surrender. It's a language of availability. It's a language of uncertainty. It's a language of loss. Thomas Merton said, we gain only what we give up. And if we give up everything, we gain everything. Give up yourself. Give yourself away. It's not all about you. You know, but if, if someone would have said that to me, at any point before, you know, the recent months, I would have flown into a rage. How fucking dare you? Do you know how much I have suffered? Do you know how much pain I've lived with my entire life? Do you have any comprehension? The years of addiction, crawling through the debris of my own hopelessness. Do you know what abuse and neglect does to you? Defending my right to hold on to the pain. I am this because of that. And in a way, to let go may, for you, did for me, feel like a betrayal. You've already been betrayed enough. And if you let go, if you stop holding on to injustice and rage and that fierceness that is your survival instinct. If you let it go, what was it all for? Because it made you who you are. How's that going? Are you trapped? Are you distressed? Are you confined? Are you in pain? I think there was a long time when I thought if I let it go, if I surrendered, I'd be betraying myself, I'd be betraying the boy. I have such clear memories of the distress I went through all through my childhood, the isolation, you know, the isolation, the terror. I lived with that all of my life, holding it so tightly. It's my reason for being. Did terrible things in my life in the name of survival hurt myself, hurt lots of other people. You have to forgive yourself. You have to let go. And the only real power anyone has is to surrender. It's the only liberation. The only liberation is to surrender. And you get to a point, which is what I've been going through lately, is every time I, I even got what I want in, a, in the smallest of way, through the imposition of my will in, in, in the choice that involved other people, I would just feel awful. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And when you do surrender and you find that language, find that language of availability, find that language of uncertainty and loss and you say here I am here I am you don't know what's going to happen let go of yesterday let go of tomorrow let go of hope stop planning you can do things but just don't make plans into the future just do things you find that language you start to realize that the pattern 
that was given to you as a child, the puzzle that you internalized that has pieces missing, pieces broken, you don't know how it goes together, you're pushing all the pieces together, trying to fix it, trying to make it work and it doesn't, you can accept that is, you know, a part of surrender is radical acceptance. And you can also accept that there is already a pattern, vast, mysterious, unknowable in the way that we want to reduce it with certainty, but knowable with our heart. And that pattern is reality. It's waiting for you to come out of here into here and to be present because when we're in here, we're not present. And you don't need hope. You don't need hope. And when you start to give yourself away in the moment and just accept, fearlessly accept, it doesn't mean, you say, doesn't mean you're not gonna suffer. It doesn't mean you, to say you're not gonna feel pain, but it's okay. It's not about you. It's not your pain. When you start to give yourself away The miraculous becomes an everyday thing, really. In the smallest of ways, joy enters your life. And you don't need hope because you, there is a naturally occurring trust that though you may suffer, everything will be all right. There is nothing to fear, really. You know, all my life I was sort of terrified that if I died I wouldn't continue and needed to believe in life after death so that this person I call Sam would live on in some way you know the strangest thing has happened over the last few months even that doesn't really matter I'll become food for the worms and the trees and that's a kind of eternal being I think it doesn't matter you are a part of something so much more meaningful than what it is you think you want the pain you're holding on to so make a choice the only choice you really have the power to make that's going to give you freedom and that's surrender radically accept your flawed state your wounded state because when you're trying to fix yourself for a future that's never going to happen you're not accepting yourself at all at all it's just an act of aggression you have to accept yourself because if you can't accept yourself you can't accept anybody else and you can't accept this moment look at these wee dogs so good <coughs> So, you cannot enter any world for which you do not have the language. That language is not certainty, it's surrender. Okay, let's just walk down to the water. We're near the river now. And then I'll say goodbye. I'll take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you to everybody that uh, participates in this strange thing we do on this channel. Those people that show themselves in the comments, I can feel very vulnerable. The people that email me, people that reach out, and all those people that, that donate it makes a huge difference in my life. So thank you very much. Come on, we go down here. Come on. this oh my god fire how glorious is that the color of beautiful decay
Where are you going? Borage, where are you going? So, I think that's it. Come on then, sausage. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, if you need to talk, just reach out. My email address is under every video. Um, and uh, I think that's it. God, days like this, I could just keep talking, but I've run out of road. So I'll see you soon. Bye.